Entry edition. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Scott K. If you're like me, you probably had an alarm set to remind you of the NK65 entry restocks. And for a good reason too. For $95, the NK65 was touted as the best entry custom keyboard on the market. A polycarbonate case with a modified top mount design, hot swap, and RGB. It even comes with a sweet carrying case. However, as good as the NK65 is, it isn't perfect. It's still fairly light construction, and even with the provided silicone dampener, the case is still fairly boomy and does have a plastic sound. So, I wanted to explore. How good can we really make this NK65? Like really? Alright, let's get started. Before we start any modifications, let's see how the NK65 is put together. First, we got the polycarbonate lower tray. Notice all the little standoffs and supports in this lower tray. Then, we got this nice purple silicone dampener. This helps to fill the void and reduce the hollow sound from the case. Then, we got the PCB. This is a hot swap PCB with RGB built in and also with VIA programming support. Finally, you got the plate, which is attached to the top frame. Hence, why they call it the modified top mount design. This is where things get a little tricky. Yes, the top plate is mounted to the top frame with 12 little screws around the perimeter as you see here. The plate offers two permanent built-in aluminum standoffs that you can mount your PCB to, like you see here. This provides hard mounting point between PCB and the plate, something we're going to get to later. Then the whole thing is screwed in like this. Finally, the whole thing is then mounted to the lower case via these five standoffs in the tray. Hold up, wait a minute. If the entire thing is mounted into the tray, does that mean it's actually a tray mount keyboard? Depends on how you look at it, but if you remove the plate from the top frame like I did here, you can actually still assemble the whole thing together this way. And so yes, it appears it is a tray mount keyboard. So we're gonna do some stuff some minor and some irreversible. So if you decide to follow along, please do this at your own discretion. We're gonna do this in three different stages. Stage one, we're gonna insert some foam between the PCB and the plate and reduce the hollowness. Then we're gonna use some silicone O-rings to burger mount the top plate to the frame. Stage two, we're gonna do what I did for the TOEFL 65 and use O-rings to float the PCB and the plate above the center standoff. Stage three, we're gonna go a little crazy and turn this into a true top mount keyboard. Stages 1 and 2 are completely reversible and if you choose to do so, always turn it back to stock. Stage 3 will make irreversible changes that you will not be able to go back, but perhaps it'll all be worth it. Before we get started, here's a stock NK65 sound test. That was okay, but let's get started with stage 1. First, start by disassembling the entire keyboard. I already had this disassembled, so I'm going to skip the unscrewing portions. Separate the PCB from the plate by removing the two screws on the PCB side. 
Now flip the top plate and the frame assembly upside down and remove all the 12 screws holding the plate to the top frame. Now we will start the foaming process. We're going to be using vinyl 3 16 inch foam that we're going to be cutting and sticking onto the underside of the plate. Is this ghetto? Of course it is. Does it work? This foam absorbs reverb and vibration very well. Plus, it's $2 for an entire 17 foot roll. I could have purchased pre-cut foam from a vendor for about 20 bucks or so, but I wanted to achieve the best NK65 status with as minimal investment as necessary. So you cut little pieces like this, and cut that in half to match the width of the spacing between the switch sockets of the plate. This took me about 30 minutes or so, so I won't bore you with the repetition. Let's skip to the final product. She don't look pretty, but she do work. If this bothers you, you could always purchase pre-cut foam. Now we're going to start the burger mounting process. We're going to be using silicone o-rings that are 3mm by 1mm by 1mm. What we're going to be doing is taking the screw for the plate and the top frame and start off by fitting an o-ring through it. So we're going to take a slightly different approach to this this time. This actually was a recommendation from a viewer on the TOEFL video. Instead of trying to place an o-ring on the standoff itself, we're going to stick it onto the underside of the screw so it's easier to place overall. Now repeat this process for all 12 screws. Now screw the plate into the top frame with your o-ring screws. Remember not to tighten it too much where the o-ring just pops off the screw head. Now that your plate is burger mounted to the top frame, let's install the PCB. Use the two standoffs to firmly attach the PCB onto the plate using the provided screws. Now place this top assembly back onto the lower tray and screw it down into the five standoffs below. Now stage 1 is complete. Let's put the GAT yellows back in and some keycaps and do a quick typing test. It's already starting to sound cleaner. Let's move on to stage 2. Start off by removing the keycaps to access the standoff screws. Then remove the screws themselves. Now repeat this process for all 5 standoff screws. With the screws removed, Gently lift up the top assembly from the lower tray. 
Now notice the standoffs below. For stage 2, we'll be using the two outer standoffs on the left, and skipping the center, then using the two outer standoffs on the right. The rest of those pegs are actually not screw-in standoffs, but rather support for the bottom of the PCB, more hard contact areas. For stage 2, we'll be using two different sizes of silicone o-rings. The o-ring between the lower standoff and the PCB plate will be the 4x1x1.5 as you see on the left. The o-ring between the screw and the top of the plate will be the smaller 3x1x1 you see on the right. We're going to start by prepping the screws with a smaller o-ring. Slide the o-ring from the bottom and turn the screw while holding the o-ring to get it up the thread. Then repeat this process for three other screws. Now, place the larger o-rings on top of the outer four lower standoffs, as you see here. Remember that we're going to be skipping this middle standoff. Now finish off with the right side. Now that you have all the o-rings in place, gently place the top assembly onto the lower tray. When done properly, you should be able to see the o-ring through the hole like so. Finally, screw down the outer four standoffs with your prepared screws, being careful not to over tighten. What I like to do is to remove the tip from the screwdriver and just use my fingers. Now put the caps back and let's go for a typing test. At this point, it already sounds so good to me, but this is not its ultimate form. Let's move on to stage 3. First, start off by removing all of the caps. Now remove the space bar. Then remove all of the switches from the plate. Finally, remove the four screws that were in place from stage 2. Now, gently lift the top off to expose the lower tray. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Time to do some drilling. 
Take your time with this. Place the drill bit over the standoff and slowly drill away the material. Make sure you don't go all the way through and make a hole in your case or your desk. You can also use some wire clippers and just cut them cleanly off as well. Rather than watching me drill all of these standoffs and supports, let's move to the final product. Now we have all the standoffs and supports drilled off and removed. Next, we move on to the aluminum standoff on the plate. This is what creates the hard mounting between the PCB and the plate. Similar process here as the tray. We take the drill bit and slowly drill away the top of the standoff, enough that it no longer touches the PCB. Now repeat this process for the other side as well. Now that the plate standoff is removed, we can move on to the next step, the assembly. With no PCB standoff, you might be wondering, how do I keep the PCB in place now? This is similar in concept with what happens with certain top and gasket mount keyboards. As you can see, the switch itself provides enough friction to hold the entire PCB by itself. Before we start friction fitting all the switches and the PCB together, start off by placing one switch in each corner so that we could guide the PCB on and in place. Gently place the PCB down and then make sure the switches are going into the hot swap sockets without bending any of the contacts. Finally, install all of the switches into the plate and PCB assembly. I use the box to prop up the PCB so it does not fall out while I'm pressing in the switches. All the switches are in, and so are the stabilizers. With no lower tray standoff, you might be wondering, how do I keep the top and bottom from coming apart? You're correct, that is a legitimate concern. However, there is a solution to that, friction fitting. Overall, I noticed that the upper and lower frames of the NK65 fit pretty snug together in the first place. However, I noticed the corner is where the most amount of grab was. I used three layers of masking tape for the rear corners to create a tighter squeeze between the upper and lower pieces. A better solution is actually gaffer tape, which is pressure sensitive and works like a smoother duct tape. I also put one layer of the masking tape in front for good measure, but I feel it isn't necessary given how tight this fit was. Put the silicone dampener back in and get ready to friction fit the top. So you might be thinking, yo Scott, this is ridiculous, that's not gonna hold. Actually, this was such a tight fit that it required quite a bit of force to push it down. However, this is still removable. I was able to use a small screwdriver in one of the screw holes to push the cases apart. There you have it, the stage 3 is now complete. It was pretty daunting to think that I will be drilling this keyboard apart, but at the end of the day, it turned out to be very nice. The NK65 is no longer a modified top mount, it is a true top mount keyboard. One thing I noticed right off the bat was how even the key presses were. Without further ado, let's jump into the sound test and see how it compares to the other stages.
What do you guys think? What is your favorite stage? Personally, I'm torn between stage 2 and 3. Stage 2 has more pop and has a warmer sound signature. Stage 3 is extremely even and refined and almost doesn't even sound like a plastic case. Please comment below and share your preference. As usual, if you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe and I will have more content for you in the future. Before we end, here is a little bonus of the Stage 3 NK65 with SA keycaps. Just oh so good. Thanks.